I've been looking for a solution to get rid of some of this mesquite that didn't include herbicides. So I read a small article, uh, actually it wasn't even an article, it was mostly just a, a brief mention that mesquites may have enough fuel in themselves to burn the root structure down past the bud zone. Now obviously some of these smaller mesquites here that we have popped up all over the place, those, those are likely not going to have enough fuel up above the ground to burn out their root system. But some of these multi-stem mesquites like this one in front of us would, or at least I'm going to try that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all, all of this, cut down to the trunk, probably about right there. I'm, I'm going to try to leave about a foot above ground level. And then I'm going to restack all of that cut fuel back up on top at the, at the base here. And right now we're under a burn ban, but I wanted to go ahead and get some of this stuff cut and uh, get it stacked up on some of the root structures so that when the burn ban is lifted, uh, we could try and see if this will work. Okay, so we've got the, the first mesquite down. We've got all the foliage cut down, and let me give you a close-up of... So as I mentioned, I'm, I'm leaving the... Some of the larger trunks uh, about a foot some of its two feet uh, above the ground level and the reason I'm doing that is to provide fuel right down to the root system so the way this is going to be stacked is all of the the larger the larger fuel we're gonna stack right up here in sorry for the shadow we're gonna stack all of that uh, right up in uh, up against the trunk and then we're going to stack the lighter stuff uh, up top. So this is a mesquite tree, all cut down and restacked. So you can see we've got a real tight fuel bundle right here at the base. And as this stuff dries out, mesquite, being a hardwood, uh, dries or burns pretty hot anyway. So um, hopefully after the burn ban goes off, we'll be able to to burn this down and see if um, we can get get the fire to burn uh, down below the bud zone to keep these mesquites from coming back. And again, all of this fuel is just from uh, the mesquite that I showed you earlier. I didn't add any fuel from, from any of the other ones. I'll show you a couple of more that I've done um, in another circumstance. So this is another part of the same property just outside of Fredericksburg. And you can see this, this area has mesquite trees that are a lot more mature, but there's also a lot more dead wood. <clears throat> and don't get me wrong, I'm not against mesquite trees. I, I actually think uh, that we will keep uh, a large number of these for a couple of reasons. One, they provide cover for the wildlife. There's a lot of birds, uh, a lot of songbirds that we have in this area and as development presses in, um, the habitat for the songbirds, for the native songbirds, and the migratory songbirds continues to be depleted. Um, in addition to that, from a wildlife, or I'm sorry, from a livestock perspective, mesquites add shade, but typically they don't have a dense enough canopy to prevent any of the grass, any of the native grasses uh, from growing. We've been in a drought uh, for the past couple of months here in Gillespie County. And previous to that, uh, there was some, some overgrazing that happened on this property. Um, so it really looks pretty rough right now. But um, mesquites uh, in some ways do, do provide some benefit. So we will end up keeping a number of these. But this example that I'll show you back here in October of 2018, let me back up here. I don't know if you can see them, but there's some highline wires here. And back in October of 2018, the power company came in and replaced some of these poles. And this is on the back of our property, but they replaced a number of these poles along this line. And when they did that, 
they have a 20 foot right of way so they came in and cut the mesquites at the base and so all of this growth here is uh, right at one year old so uh, just cutting mesquites off at the base doesn't work uh, matter of fact you can see what ends up happening when you cut a mesquite off at the base because you have the uh, the sprout zone below the soil level you end up with any number of these new sprouts that come up and you end up with a multi what if if this particular tree were allowed to grow it would end up with a a, a multi-trunk tree uh, similar to what I was working on just a few minutes ago so what I've done in this area because there is so much existing dead fuel just from the dead wood of these uh, mesquite trees is I've chosen a couple of them so there's actually two here so there's one here and then there's a smaller one here and actually this wood right here that you can see is hackberry but it, it also was dead wood so what I've done is I've just taken some of the dead wood uh, fuel most of its mesquite and stacked it on top of um, some of these trees that were that were cut down a year ago and we're gonna see if we can get that to burn down the uh, the roots and the bud zone here's an example of another one again this was just all dead wood um, from trees that I didn't necessarily want to cut down and don't need to be cut down but just limbed them up and cleaned them up so we're gonna give it a shot and uh, see if it works so this is the mesquite that I cut Oh, probably a month ago. Okay, so here's the start. We're gonna see if we can get the the stumps burned down past the bud zone into the root system. So this is what's left of the mesquite that I cut down and stacked all of the fuel on itself to see if it would burn out the stump. I'm not particularly impressed with how it worked so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to blow all of the ashes out of the way and see how the stumps look underneath it's been it's been two weeks since we burned this so there's no chance of the any coals still being there so I'm gonna try to blow these ashes out of the way and see what we're left with so this mesquite had three separate trunks coming out of it, or at least three separate main trunks. And you can see here, here, and here, um, they didn't burn down really much more than ground level. With all of the, the ashes blown out of the way, I'm tempted to dig down and see how far, if I can tell, uh, how far down below the ground level it at least dried out the, the stumps. But I think the real trick to this is, you know, I left the stumps about a, a foot, uh, some of them two feet above the, the surface. And I've got some other ones that I'll show you where I cut them down at ground level. And I think ground level may be a better, better way to go at it. My thought was leaving some fuel up above that once the above ground stuff's ignited, that it would go ahead and travel down into the ground. But obviously that didn't work here. So I think I think adding all the fuel, cutting everything down at ground level and putting just stacking all the fuel right on top of the ground may do better. So I took some uh, fuel uh, just from around this area from dead and fallen limbs in the hopes that I could burn out some of these other stumps. Uh, I suspect it didn't work, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and blow these off and we'll take a look at them as well. Um, but these were these were smaller areas. I didn't 
put just a ton of fuel on them. Uh, it was just stuff that I was able to to drag up, and I suspect it didn't do anything. But it was it was a try. It was an experiment. We'll see. So now that we have these blown off, um, we'll take a look and see what we've got here. This one. This one was obviously a smaller one, so you can see just to get a perspective with my finger. Um, that one did burn down, um, not really down into the soil, so it's a little bit tough to, un to know whether it burned down past the bud zone or not, or at least rendered the, <clears throat> rendered the stumps. Um, to not be viable anymore. Again, here's another one. Um, it did burn, uh, just didn't didn't have the the fuel and the mojo to to go down below the surface. Here's two more, um, and so you can see how important it is to make sure that your fuel source is really. Uh, centered around the stump that you're trying to get out. Obviously, this fire was was actually centered here, so I didn't do a good job of stacking stacking fuel on that one. And then this is one that was a stump cut from the power line right away, so you can get a feel for where we're at. And this one was actually about the size of this tree here. So I just stacked fuel. I didn't cut any of the limbs. Um, I just stacked fuel on top of it. So you can see it, it burned down uh, all of the new growth, but it didn't burn it down far enough. I don't think, uh, we'll see if it's still viable. So we're in November right now. Uh, by the spring, we should know whether these stumps are gonna be viable for new growth or not. My hope is, even though they didn't burn down like I had intended, uh, that maybe uh, they dried out the, the stump and the taproot enough down below that bud zone uh, to render them ineffective for new growth. So we'll see.